in the last few weeks, we've had some solar flares, a lot of action on the sun, and we've had amazing uh, northern lights. Now, what I've noticed in the last couple of days is that uh, as we are looking at sunspots on the sun, so you can see here some examples. So here we have the sunspots R3663 and R3664. We'll talk about those in a moment. But what is interesting is that uh, as they are migrating over the surface of the sun, it brings up two questions. What is the rotation of the sun on itself? So often we know that uh, the Earth is rotating on itself. That's why we have 24-hour days. But what's happening on the sun? We'll answer that and we'll see what can we expect for the next week or two about the new sunspots on the sun. So let's see if we can have a look together. So when you look at this one here, you can see that, let's see, can I make this a little bit bigger? Very nice. So here is the sun and we have information here from before between uh, May 3rd and May 9th, and I'll give you more information as we go along. So here we have the surface of the sun, and you could see here that we have some sunspots on the northern hemisphere and sun some sunspots right here close to the equator of the sun. So here there are two sets of hotspots. Now we have learned over the, next, the last couple of weeks that when we have sunspots on the sun, there's a lot more uh, um, solar flares that are coming out of it and therefore affecting our either our electromagn uh, the magnetic field of the earth or our electronics. So let's double check with a little video. So we have this one right here. Perfect. I like this. So this video here shows from May 3rd to May 9th. So we have here the sun that is rotating. That makes sense. So we know we have in mind that it's uh, turning on itself. That's what we've, we noticed from Earth. We also know in the last couple of weeks, we have here an increased amount of solar flare here on the, the Northern Hemisphere. And here we had an increased solar flare on the Southern Hemisphere or close to the equator. So I'm gonna just uh, bring it forward a little bit, something that looks like this. And let's have a look. So we have this segment here a bit further up, and here we have these storms right here. Let's look at the example we have earlier. So there we go. Close to where we have all those solar flares, we have here sunspots in the northern hemisphere, and we have these sunspots right there. So that's something that is interesting here. So first of all, if you look here at this video, so this is accelerated. So as we go along, so we'll narrate a little bit. So we have this video here from May 3rd, and as time is progressing, we can see that there is a rotation here that is going from left to right. So here, so we can see that the sun rotates over uh, on itself faster than the orbit of Earth around the sun. And that's why we can see it here. So what is interesting is that is that the rotation of the sun on itself is between it's about 25 days, so between 25 and 35 days. You can see how come it's different on the sun? So let's have a look. So here you could see that it's moving slowly. And here it's about, uh, so May 3rd to May 9th, so that's about six days. So we have here the, the sunspot and solar flare from down here, and it's moved all the way to this point. And to the north, we have moving to this side right here. So things are happening. So if I was to go and bring it back here and go a bit faster, see the, over nine days, this is what the sun will go from here to about there. So we had solar flare. Oops, I think it got upset for a second. So we have the solar flare here from the middle part here to the edge. And we have here these sunspots that go from here to about there. So let's go back again. So from the beginning to the end like this. So here, what's interesting is that there's a change in how fast things are moving. So here we go, we have these flares right here that went from about the middle part here to the edge, so about a third, and about a quarter here of the sun, whereas these ones here started down here and they have covered a bit faster. So maybe it's about two thirds of the sun. So somehow, oops, it's flickering a little bit, 
from what we can see, it seems that the, the solar flare here with the sunspots, they travel a bit faster here, close to the equator compared to this one here. So let's have a look at the map. The map is right here. Let's look at this. So thank you for NASA for these amazing drawings. But if you have the sun here, and here we have a vertical uh, axis here, it seems that from what they're, they're publishing, that it takes about 25 days for the, the surface of the sun to go one full rotation at the equator. However, as we are here on uh, closer to the pole, it's about 35 days to the North Pole and very similar to the South Pole. So here you're going to say, okay, how come it is different? Now, keep in mind that the sun is a huge star. Well, it's a medium star, but compared to Earth, it is huge. So what happened is that there's a rotation that is happening. But inside of the sun, we have, uh, we have fusion reaction that are creating energy. We have a um, we have what do we call this convection cells and close to the surface we have a lot of the a lot of wind that is happening right here so what happens is inside we have a lot of things going on at the same times and it's creating and churning all kind of materials and moving along the equator at 35 at 25 days per rotation now as we go further north what happened is that we are closer to the axis of rotation and therefore, yes, there is some movement, but it's not as rapid or as chaotic as what we would have here along the equator. And there's a change in how much time it takes. So if you look, so I was looking at the, uh, on the net, they were saying that the sun takes about 27 days for rotation, but that was an average. So here you have a great example where on the equator, it goes much faster. So let's go back to the video and see what we've got. So here we have the bottom here, perfect. So here we're gonna see how over six days, how did we have the flare that are going from the middle part here to the edge. So that's about a quarter of the sun. And here it goes from here all the way to about there, which is about two thirds of the side we see. And then you're gonna see how the rotation happens. So look at this, so it goes and we go this way. So here, that's something to look into. Now, as I do this, there's something else we have to look into. We have to look at the axis of rotation. So here, if you look this way, if you look at the bottom part here, it does move a bit less right here. And here, it still moves to the upper part. So let's go back. So here, as we go along. So here, what's interesting, oops, let's put it this way. So what is interesting is that we have an axis of rotation that is about seven degrees that is tilted a little bit. So let's see if I can beat. So the axis of rotation of the sun is about seven degrees tilted on one side. So that means that what we see of the sun changes all year. We say, well, how can we have an analogy? Well, we know that our planet Earth has an axis of rotation of about 23.5 degrees. So what happened is it's tilted on one side. So that means that we have seasons. One, so during one part of the, the year, the southern hemisphere is closer to the sun, whereas another, and whereas the northern part is a bit further. And if you go a full six months away, it's on the other side. And therefore we have a difference in the distance between the sun and the earth, and that's creating the seasons on our planet. So here we have the sun, and here we have seven degrees. So the axis probably comes right here. Let's see if I can make it a bit bigger. Very good. So it's probably just right here in the corner and it's going through and it's coming out just on the other side here. So here we have a tilted sun as it rotates. So what we see from the sun is different throughout the year. So let's go back a little bit and then move this faster. I think it's a great way to see how it goes. So as it goes here, so May 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and by now, I'm going too fast. Let's try again. So we have here May 3rd, 4th, 5th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th, and 9th. So you could see that it is turning. We see a lot more of the Southern Hemisphere right now. So on March, we are, that we're the closest to this. No, this is the 
part where the, from the tilt we see the most of the southern hemisphere. And then what we see the most of the northern hemisphere is about September. So it changes as we are going through the seasons as well. Is this affecting the season? That's a great question. I don't know. I have to do some research to try to see how much energy comes from sun going to us, depending on the year, depending on how it, uh, how the axis of rotation makes an effect here. But we've seen in the past, I'll put a link to the video at the end, where we have cycles in the sun. So as you can see, the surface of the sun is quite active. And last week I talked about the sun, about the cycle of about 10 to 11 years, where right now we had the peak of a cycle where there's the most solar activities on the surface, whereas uh, probably in five, six years will be in the lowest part here. So the output of the sun makes a difference to what we feel on the planet. Is that affecting our climate? Is that affect affecting uh, the seasons? That's a good question because we have a season, a cycle of about 11, 10 to 11 years. Whereas we're looking at how climate changes over decades and centuries. So that's something we have to look into. But I thought it was exciting. That's something I have learned this week, knowing that we have here uh, the sun that has a rotation. I knew that, but I confirmed this week that we have here in the, let's see if we can make it better. Here the equator is rotating faster at 25 days per cycle, whereas here at the top is 35 days, and we have it tailed on the sun. All kind of things we can learn all the time, and it is it may or may not affect us in ways we know or we realize. And if you have information that I don't know, please put them in the comments below. I'm always looking for more information to learn about our, so our sun, our solar system, and I think it's quite fun. I'm going to also put here a link to a video I did last week on how there's a cycle with respect to the sunspots and how much um, storms or solar eruptions comes from the sun. So flares or the amount of flares from the sun goes up and down in cycles. So I'm going to show here a video about that and let's see what we're going to learn today.